Medical Ultrasound, Wikipedia Article Audio Medical ultrasound is a diagnostic imaging technique based on the application of ultrasound. It is used to see internal body structures such as tendons, muscles, joints, blood vessels, and internal organs. Its aim is often to find a source of a disease or to exclude any pathology. The practice of examining pregnant women using ultrasound is called obstetric ultrasound, and is widely used. By organ or system. Anesthesiology. Angiology. Cardiology. Emergency medicine. Gastroenterology slash colorectal surgery. Gynecology and obstetrics. Otolaryngology. Neonatology. Ophthalmology. Pulmonology. Urology. Scrotal. Musculoskeletal. Nephrology. From sound to image. Producing a sound wave. Receiving the echoes. Forming the image. Displaying the image. Sound in the body. Modes. Expansions. Doppler ultrasonography. Contrast ultrasonography. Molecular ultrasonography. Ultrasound is sound waves with frequencies which are higher than those audible to humans. Ultrasonic images, also known as sonograms, are made by sending pulses of ultrasound into tissue using a probe. The sound echoes off the tissue, with different tissues reflecting varying degrees of sound. These echoes are recorded and displayed as an image to the operator. Elastography Interventional ultrasonography Many different types of images can be formed using sonographic instruments. The most well-known type is a B-mode image, which displays the acoustic impedance of a two-dimensional cross-section of tissue. Other types of image can display blood flow, motion of tissue over time, the location of blood, the presence of specific molecules, the stiffness of tissue, or the anatomy of a three-dimensional region. Compression ultrasonography Attributes Compared to other prominent methods of medical imaging, ultrasound has several advantages. It provides images in real time, it is portable and can be brought to the bedside, it is substantially lower in cost, and it does not use harmful ionizing radiation. Drawbacks of ultrasonography include various limits on its field of view, such as the need for patient cooperation, dependence on physique, difficulty imaging structures behind bone and air, and the necessity of a skilled operator, usually a trained professional. Sonography is widely used in medicine. It is possible to perform both diagnosis and therapeutic procedures, using ultrasound to guide interventional procedures. Sonographers are medical professionals who perform scans which are then typically interpreted by themselves or the radiologists, physicians who specialize in the application and interpretation of a wide variety of medical imaging modalities or by cardiologists in the case of cardiac ultrasonography. Sonographers typically use a handheld probe that is placed directly on and moved over the patient. Increasingly, clinicians are using ultrasound in their office and hospital practices. Sonography is effective for imaging soft tissues of the body. Superficial structures such as muscles, tendons, testes, breast, thyroid, and parathyroid glands, and the neonatal brain are imaged at a higher frequency, which provides better axial and lateral resolution.
Deeper structures such as liver and kidney are imaged at a lower frequency 1.6 MHz with lower axial and lateral resolution but greater penetration. A general purpose ultrasound scanner may be used for most imaging purposes. Usually specialty applications may be served only by use of a specialty transducer. Most ultrasound procedures are done using a transducer on the surface of the body, but improved diagnostic confidence is often possible if a transducer can be placed inside the body. For this purpose, specialty transducers, including endovaginal, endorectal, and transesophageal transducers are commonly employed. At the extreme of this, very small transducers can be mounted on small diameter catheters and placed into blood vessels to image the walls and disease of those vessels. In anesthesiology, ultrasound is commonly used by anesthesiologists to guide injecting needles when placing local anesthetic solutions near nerves. It is also used for gaining vascular access such as central venous cannulation and difficult arterial cannulation. Transcranial Doppler is frequently used by neuroanesthesiologists for obtaining information about flow velocity in the basal cerebral vessels. In angiology or vascular medicine, duplex ultrasound is daily used to diagnose arterial and venous disease all over the body. This is particularly important in neurology, where ultrasound is used for assessing blood flow and stenosis in the carotid arteries and the big intracerebral arteries. Intravascular ultrasound is a methodology using a specially designed catheter with a miniaturized ultrasound probe attached to the distal end of the catheter. The proximal end of the catheter is attached to computerized ultrasound equipment. It allows the application of ultrasound technology, such as piezoelectric transducer or CMUT, to see from inside blood vessels out through the surrounding blood column, visualizing the endothelium of blood vessels in living individuals. On the legs, ultrasonography of deep venous thrombosis focuses on the deep veins while ultrasonography of chronic venous insufficiency of the legs focuses on more superficial veins. Echocardiography is an essential tool in cardiology, to diagnose e.g. dilatation of parts of the heart and function of heart ventricles and valves. Point-of-care emergency ultrasound has many applications in emergency medicine including the focused assessment with sonography for trauma exam for assessing significant hemoperitoneum or pericardial tamponade after trauma. Ultrasound is occasionally used in the emergency department to expedite the care of people with right upper quadrant abdominal pain who may have gallstones or cholecystitis. Abdominal and endoanal ultrasound are frequently used in gastroenterology and colorectal surgery. In abdominal sonography, the solid organs of the abdomen such as the pancreas, aorta, inferior vena cava, liver, gall bladder, bile ducts, kidneys, and spleen are imaged. Sound waves are blocked by gas in the bowel and attenuated in different degree by fat, therefore there are limited diagnostic capabilities in this area. The appendix can sometimes be seen when inflamed. Endoanal ultrasound is used particularly in the investigation of anorectal symptoms such as fecal incontinence or obstructed defecation. It images the immediate perianal anatomy and is able to detect occult defects such as tearing of the anal sphincter. Ultrasonography of liver tumors allows for both detection and characterization. Gynecologic ultrasonography examines female pelvic organs as well as the bladder, the adnexa, and the pouch of Douglas. It commonly uses vaginal ultrasonography. Obstetrical sonography is commonly used during pregnancy to check on the development of the fetus. Most structures of the neck, 
including the thyroid and parathyroid glands, lymph nodes, and salivary glands, are well visualized by high-frequency ultrasound with exceptional anatomic detail. Ultrasound is the preferred imaging modality for thyroid tumors and lesions, and ultrasonography is critical in the evaluation, preoperative planning, and postoperative surveillance of patients with thyroid cancer. Many other benign and malignant conditions in the head and neck can be evaluated and managed with the help of diagnostic ultrasound and ultrasound-guided procedures. In neonatology, transcranial Doppler can be used for basic assessment of intracerebral structural abnormalities, bleeds, ventriculomegaly or hydrocephalus and anoxic insults. The ultrasound can be performed through the soft spots in the skull of a newborn infant until these completely close at about one year of age and form a virtually impenetrable acoustic barrier for the ultrasound. The most common site for cranial ultrasound is the anterior fontanelle. The smaller the fontanelle, the poorer the quality of the picture. In ophthalmology and optometry, there are two major forms of eye exam using ultrasound. In pulmonology, endobronchial ultrasound probes are applied to standard flexible endoscopic probes and used by pulmonologists to allow for direct visualization of endobronchial lesions and lymph nodes prior to transbronchial needle aspiration. Among its many uses, EBUS aids in lung cancer staging by allowing for lymph node sampling without the need for major surgery. Ultrasound is routinely used in urology to determine, for example, the amount of fluid retained in a patient's bladder. In a pelvic sonogram, organs of the pelvic region are imaged. This includes the uterus and ovaries or urinary bladder. Males are sometimes given a pelvic sonogram to check on the health of their bladder, the prostate, or their testicles. In young males, it is used to distinguish more benign testicular masses from testicular cancer, which is highly curable but which must be treated to preserve health and fertility. There are two methods of performing a pelvic sonography externally or internally. The internal pelvic sonogram is performed either transvaginally or transrectally. Sonographic imaging of the pelvic floor can produce important diagnostic information regarding the precise relationship of abnormal structures with other pelvic organs and it represents a useful hint to treat patients with symptoms related to pelvic prolapse, double incontinence, and obstructed defecation. It is used to diagnose and, at higher frequencies, to treat kidney stones or kidney crystals. Scrotal ultrasonography is used in the evaluation of testicular pain, and can help identify solid masses. Musculoskeletal ultrasound is used to examine tendons, muscles, nerves, ligaments, soft tissue masses, and bone surfaces. Ultrasound is an alternative to X-ray imaging in detecting fractures of the wrist, elbow, and shoulder for patients up to 12 years. Quantitative ultrasound is an adjunct musculoskeletal test for myopathic disease in children, estimates of lean body mass in adults, proxy measures of muscle quality in older adults with sarcopenia. In nephrology, Ultrasonography of the kidneys is essential in the diagnosis and management of kidney-related diseases. The kidneys are easily examined, and most pathological changes in the kidneys are distinguishable with ultrasound. U.S. is an accessible, versatile and expensive, and fast aid for decision-making in patients with renal symptoms and for guidance in renal intervention. Renal ultrasound is a common examination, which has been performed for decades. Using B-mode imaging, assessment of renal anatomy is easily performed, and U.S. is often used as image guidance for renal interventions. Furthermore, 
novel applications in renal US have been introduced with contrast-enhanced ultrasound, elastigraphy, and fusion imaging. However, renal US has certain limitations, and other modalities, such as CT and MRI, should always be considered as supplementary imaging modalities in the assessment of renal disease. The creation of an image from sound is done in three steps producing a sound wave, receiving echoes, and interpreting those echoes. A sound wave is typically produced by a piezoelectric transducer encased in a plastic housing. Strong, short electrical pulses from the ultrasound machine drive the transducer at the desired frequency. The frequencies can be anywhere between 1 and 18 MHz, though frequencies up to 5100 MHz have been used experimentally in a technique known as biomicroscopy in special regions, such as the anterior chamber of the eye. Older technology transducers focused their beam with physical lenses. Newer technology transducers use phased array techniques to enable the ultrasound machine to change the direction and depth of focus. The sound is focused either by the shape of the transducer, a lens in front of the transducer, or a complex set of control pulses from the ultrasound scanner, in the technique. This focusing produces an arc-shaped sound wave from the face of the transducer. The wave travels into the body and comes into focus at a desired depth. Materials on the face of the transducer enable the sound to be transmitted efficiently into the body. In addition, a water-based gel is placed between the patient's skin and the probe. The sound wave is partially reflected from the layers between different tissues or scattered from smaller structures. Specifically, Sound is reflected anywhere where there are acoustic impedance changes in the body, e.g. blood cells in blood plasma, small structures in organs, etc. Some of the reflections return to the transducer. The return of the sound wave to the transducer results in the same process as sending the sound wave, except in reverse. The return sound wave vibrates the transducer and the transducer turns the vibrations into electrical pulses that travel to the ultrasonic scanner where they are processed and transformed into a digital image. A-scan ultrasound biometry, commonly referred to as an A-scan. It is an A-mode that provides data on the length of the eye, which is a major determinant in common sight disorders. B-scan ultrasonography, or B-scan, which is a B-mode scan that produces a cross-sectional view of the eye and the orbit. It is commonly used to see inside the eye when media is hazy due to cataract or any corneal opacity. Strengths Weaknesses Risks and Side Effects Studies on the Safety of Ultrasound Obstetric Ultrasound Society and Culture Regulation History France Scotland Sweden United States Manufacturers A-Mode, A-Mode is the simplest type of ultrasound. A single transducer scans a line through the body with the echoes plotted on screen as a function of depth. Therapeutic ultrasound aimed at a specific tumor or calculus is also a mode, to allow for pinpoint accurate focus of the destructive wave energy, B mode or 2D mode. In B mode ultrasound, a linear array of transducers simultaneously scans a plane through the body that can be viewed as a two-dimensional image on screen. More commonly known as 2D mode now. Doppler echocardiography, the use of Doppler ultrasonography to examine the heart. An echocardiogram can, within certain limits, 
produce accurate assessment of the direction of blood flow and the velocity of blood and cardiac tissue at any arbitrary point using the Doppler effect. Velocity measurements allow assessment of cardiac valve areas and function, any abnormal communications between the left and right side of the heart, any leaking of blood through the valves, calculation of the cardiac output and calculation of E-A ratio. Contrast enhanced ultrasound using gas-filled microbubble contrast media can be used to improve velocity or other flow-related medical measurements, transcranial Doppler and transcranial color Doppler, which measure the velocity of blood flow through the brain's blood vessels transcranially. They are used as tests to help diagnose emboli, stenosis, vasospasm from a subarachnoid hemorrhage and other problems, Doppler fetal monitors, although usually not technically graphy but rather sound generating, use the Doppler effect to detect the fetal heartbeat for prenatal care. These are handheld, and some models also display the heart rate in beats per minute. Use of this monitor is sometimes known as Doppler auscultation. The Doppler fetal monitor is commonly referred to simply as a Doppler or fetal Doppler. Doppler fetal monitors provide information about the fetus similar to that provided by a fetal stethoscope. Thyroid cysts The high-frequency thyroid ultrasound can be used to treat several gland conditions. The recurrent thyroid cyst that was usually treated in the past with surgery, can be treated effectively by a new procedure called percutaneous ethanol injection, or PEI. With ultrasound-guided placement of a 25-gauge needle within the cyst, and after evacuation of the cyst fluid, about 50% of the cyst volume is injected back into the cavity, under strict operator visualization of the needle tip. The procedure is 80% successful in reducing the cyst to minute size, metastatic thyroid cancer neck lymph nodes, the other thyroid therapy use for HFUS is to treat metastatic thyroid cancer neck lymph nodes that occur in patients who either refuse surgery, or are no longer a candidate for surgery. Small amounts of ethanol are injected under ultrasound guided needle placement. A blood flow study is done prior to the injection, by power Doppler. The blood flow can be destroyed and the node become inactive, although it may still be there. Power Doppler visualized blood flow can be eradicated, and there may be a drop in the cancer blood marker test, theroglobulin, TG, as the node become non-functional. Another interventional use for HFUS is to mark a cancer node one hour prior to surgery to help locate the node cluster at the surgery. A minute amount of methylene dye is injected, under careful ultrasound guided placement of the needle on the anterior surface, but not in the node. The dye will be evident to the thyroid surgeon when he opens the neck. A similar localization procedure with methylene blue, can be done to locate parathyroid adenomas at surgery. Date the pregnancy, confirm fetal viability, determine location of fetus, intrauterine vs ectopic, check the location of the placenta in relation to the cervix, check for the number of fetuses, check for major physical abnormalities, assess fetal growth. Check for fetal movement and heartbeat, determine the sex of the baby. To make an image, the ultrasound scanner must determine two things from each received echo. Once the ultrasonic scanner determines these two things, it can locate which pixel in the image to light up and to what intensity. Transforming the received signal into a digital image may be explained by using a blank spreadsheet as an analogy. First picture a long, flat transducer at the top of the sheet. Send pulses down the columns of the spreadsheet. Listen at each column for any return echoes. When an echo is heard, 
Note how long it took for the echo to return. The longer the wait, the deeper the row. The strength of the echo determines the brightness setting for that cell when all the echoes are recorded on the sheet, we have a grayscale image. Images from the ultrasound scanner are transferred and displayed using the DICOM standard. Normally, very little post-processing is applied to ultrasound images. Ultrasonography uses a probe containing multiple acoustic transducers to send pulses of sound into a material. Whenever a sound wave encounters a material with a different density, part of the sound wave is reflected back to the probe and is detected as an echo. The time it takes for the echo to travel back to the probe is measured and used to calculate the depth of the tissue interface causing the echo. The greater the difference between acoustic impedances, the larger the echo is. If the pulse hits gases or solids, the density difference is so great that most of the acoustic energy is reflected and it becomes impossible to see deeper. The frequencies used for medical imaging are generally in the range of 1 to 18 MHz. Higher frequencies have a correspondingly smaller wavelength and can be used to make sonograms with smaller details. However, the attenuation of the sound wave is increased at higher frequencies, so in order to have better penetration of deeper tissues, a lower frequency is used. Seeing deep into the body with sonography is very difficult. Some acoustic energy is lost every time an echo is formed, but most of it. The speed of sound varies as it travels through different materials, and is dependent on the acoustical impedance of the material. However, the sonographic instrument assumes that the acoustic velocity is constant at 1540 m s An effect of this assumption is that in a real body with non-uniform tissues, the beam becomes somewhat defocused and image resolution is reduced. To generate a 2D image, the ultrasonic beam is swept. A transducer may be swept mechanically by rotating or swinging. Or a 1D phased array transducer may be used to sweep the beam electronically. The received data is processed and used to construct the image. The image is then a 2D representation of the slice into the body. 3D images can be generated by acquiring a series of adjacent 2D images. Commonly a specialized probe that mechanically scans a conventional 2D image transducer is used. However, since the mechanical scanning is slow, it is difficult to make 3D images of moving tissues. Recently, 2D phased array transducers that can sweep the beam in 3D have been developed. These can image faster and can even be used to make live 3D images of a beating heart. Doppler ultrasonography is used to study blood flow and muscle motion. The different detected speeds are represented in color for ease of interpretation, for example leaky heart valves, the leak shows up as a flash of unique color. Colors may alternatively be used to represent the amplitudes of the received echoes. Several modes of ultrasound are used in medical imaging. These are An additional expansion or additional technique of ultrasound is biplanar ultrasound, in which the probe has two 2D planes that are perpendicular to each other, providing more efficient localization and detection. Furthermore, an omniplane probe is one that can rotate 180 degrees to obtain multiple images. In 3D ultrasound, many 2D planes are digitally added together to create a three-dimensional image of the object. Doppler ultrasonography employs the Doppler effect to assess whether structures are moving towards or away from the probe, and its relative velocity. By calculating the frequency shift of a particular sample volume, 
for example flow in an artery or a jet of blood flow over a heart valve, its speed and direction can be determined and visualized. Color Doppler is the measurement of velocity by color scale. Color Doppler images are generally combined with grayscale images to display duplex ultrasonography images. Uses include A contrast medium for medical ultrasonography is a formulation of encapsulated gaseous microbubbles to increase echogenicity of blood, discovered by Dr. Raymond Gramiak in 1968 and named Contrast Enhanced Ultrasound. This contrast medical imaging modality is clinically used throughout the world, in particular for echocardiography in the United States and for ultrasound radiology in Europe and Asia. Microbubbles-based contrast media is administrated intravenously in patient bloodstream during the medical ultrasonography examination. The microbubbles being too large in diameter, they stay confined in blood vessels and cannot extravasate towards the interstitial fluid. An ultrasound contrast media is therefore purely intravascular, making it an ideal agent to image organ microvascularization for diagnostic purposes. A typical clinical use of contrast ultrasonography is detection of a hypervascular metastatic tumor which exhibits a contrast uptake faster than healthy biological tissue surrounding the tumor. Other clinical applications using contrast exist, such as in echocardiography to improve delineation of left ventricle for visually checking contractibility of heart after a myocardial infarction. Finally, Applications in quantitative perfusion emerge for identifying early patient response to an anti-cancerous drug treatment, enabling to determine the best oncological therapeutic options. In oncological practice of medical contrast ultrasonography, clinicians use the method of parametric imaging of vascular signatures invented by Dr. Nicholas Rognan in 2010. This method is conceived as a cancer-aided diagnostic tool, facilitating characterization of a suspicious tumor in an organ. This method is based on medical computational science to analyze a time sequence of ultrasound contrast images, a digital video recorded in real time during patient examination. Two consecutive signal processing steps are applied to each pixel of the tumor. Once signal processing in each pixel completed, a color spatial map of the parameter is displayed on a computer monitor, summarizing all vascular information of the tumor in a single image called parametric image as clinical examples. This parametric image is interpreted by clinicians based on predominant colorization of the tumor, red indicates a suspicion of malignancy green or yellow a high probability of benignity. In the first case, the clinician typically prescribes a biopsy to confirm the diagnostic or a CT scan examination as a second opinion. In the second case, only a follow-up is needed with a contrast ultrasonography examination a few months later. The main clinical benefits are to avoid a systematic biopsy of benign tumors or a CT scan examination exposing the patient to X-ray radiation. The parametric imaging of vascular signatures method proved to be effective in humans for characterization of tumors in the liver. In a cancer screening context, this method might be potentially applicable to other organs such as breast or prostate. The future of contrast ultrasonography is in molecular imaging with potential clinical applications expected in cancer screening to detect malignant tumors at their earliest stage of appearance. Molecular ultrasonography uses targeted microbubbles originally designed by Dr. Alexander Klibanov in 1997. Such targeted microbubbles specifically bind or adhere to tumoral microvessels by targeting biomolecular cancer expression or inflammation processes in malignant tumors. As a result, a few minutes after their injection in blood circulation, 
the targeted microbubbles accumulate in the malignant tumor, facilitating its localization in a unique ultrasound contrast image. In 2013, the very first exploratory clinical trial in humans for prostate cancer was completed at Amsterdam in the Netherlands by Dr. Hessel Wijkstra. In molecular ultrasonography, the technique of acoustic radiation force is applied in order to literally push the targeted microbubbles towards microvessels wall, firstly demonstrated by Dr. Paul Dayton in 1999. This allows to maximize binding to the malignant tumor, the targeted microbubbles being in more direct contact with cancerous biomolecules expressed at the inner surface of tumoral microvessels. At the stage of scientific preclinical research, the technique of acoustic radiation force was implemented as a prototype in clinical ultrasound systems and validated in vivo in 2D and 3D imaging modes. Ultrasound is also used for elastigraphy, which is a relatively new imaging modality that maps the elastic properties of soft tissue. This modality emerged in the last two decades. Elastigraphy is useful in medical diagnoses as it can discern healthy from unhealthy tissue for specific organs slash growths. For example, cancerous tumors will often be harder than the surrounding tissue and diseased livers are stiffer than healthy ones. There are many ultrasound elastigraphy techniques. Interventional ultrasonography involves biopsy, emptying fluids, intrauterine blood transfusion. Compression ultrasonography is when the probe is pressed against the skin. This can bring the target structure closer to the probe increasing spatial resolution of it. Comparison of the shape of the target structure before and after compression can aid in diagnosis. It used an ultrasonography of deep venous thrombosis, wherein absence of vein compressibility is a strong indicator of thrombosis. Compression ultrasonography has both high sensitivity and specificity for detecting proximal deep vein thrombosis only in symptomatic patients. Results are not reliable when the patient is symptomless and must be checked, for example in high-risk postoperative patients mainly in orthopedic patients. A normal appendix without and with compression Absence of comprehensibility indicates appendicitis. Compression is used in this ultrasonograph to get closer to the abdominal aorta, making the superior mesenteric vein and the inferior vena cava look rather flat. As with all imaging modalities, ultrasonography has its list of positive and negative attributes. Ultrasonography is generally considered safe imaging with the World Health Organization saying. Diagnostic ultrasound studies of the fetus are generally considered to be safe during pregnancy. This diagnostic procedure should be performed only when there is a valid medical indication, and the lowest possible ultrasonic exposure setting should be used to gain the necessary diagnostic information under the as low as reasonably practicable or a LARP principle. However, medical ultrasonography should not be performed without a medical indication to perform it. To do otherwise would be to perform unnecessary health care to patients, which bring unwarranted costs and may lead to other testing. Overuse of ultrasonography is sometimes, especially as routine screening for deep vein thrombosis after orthopedic surgeries in patients who are not at heightened risk for having that condition. Similarly, although there is no evidence ultrasound could be harmful for the fetus, medical authorities typically strongly discourage the promotion, selling, or leasing of ultrasound equipment for making keepsake fetal videos. Obstetric ultrasound can be used to identify many conditions that would be harmful to the mother and the baby, 
many healthcare professionals consider the risk of leaving these conditions undiagnosed to be much greater than the very small risk, if any, associated with undergoing an ultrasound scan. However its results are occasionally incorrect, producing a false positive. False detection may result in patients being warned of birth defects when no such defect exists. When balancing risk and reward, there are recommendations to avoid the use of routine ultrasound for low-risk pregnancies, but in many countries ultrasound is now used routinely in the management of all pregnancies. Sex determination is only accurate after 12 weeks gestation. Even where sonography is used routinely in obstetric appointments during pregnancy, authorities discourage its use for non-medical purposes such as fetal keepsake videos and photos. Obstetric ultrasound is primarily used to According to the European Committee of Medical Ultrasound Safety Ultrasonic examinations should only be performed by competent personnel who are trained and updated in safety matters. Ultrasound produces heating, pressure changes, and mechanical disturbances in tissue. Diagnostic levels of ultrasound can produce temperature rises that are hazardous to sensitive organs and the embryo slash fetus. Biological effects of non-thermal origin have been reported in animals but, to date, no such effects have been demonstrated in humans, except when a microbubble contrast agent is present. Nonetheless, care should be taken to use low power settings and avoid pulsed wave scanning of the fetal brain unless specifically indicated in high-risk pregnancies. Ultrasound scanners have different Doppler techniques to visualize arteries and veins. The most common is color Doppler or power Doppler, but also other techniques like B-flow are used to show blood flow in an organ. By using pulsed wave Doppler or continuous wave Doppler blood flow velocities can be calculated. Figures released for the period 2005-2006 by the UK government show that non-obstetric ultrasound examinations constituted more than 65% of the total number of ultrasound scans conducted. Recent studies have stressed the importance of framing reproductive health matters cross-culturally, particularly when understanding the new phenomenon of the proliferation of ultrasound imaging in developing countries. In 2004, Tyne Gamal Toft interviewed 400 women in Hanoi's Obstetrics and Gynecology Hospital, each had an average of 6.6 .6 scans during her pregnancy, much higher than five years ago when a pregnant woman might or might not have had a single scan during her pregnancy in Vietnam. Gamal Toft explains that many Asian countries see the fetus as an ambiguous being unlike in Western medicine where it is common to think of the fetus as materially stable. Therefore, although women, particularly in Asian countries, express intense uncertainties regarding the safety and credibility of this technology, it is overused for its immediate reassurance. Diagnostic and therapeutic ultrasound equipment is regulated in the USA by the Food and Drug Administration, and worldwide by other national regulatory agencies. The FDA limits acoustic output using several metrics, generally, other agencies accept the FDA-established guidelines. Currently, New Mexico, Oregon, and North Dakota are the only U.S. states that regulate diagnostic medical sonographers. Certification examinations for sonographers are available in the U.S. from three organizations, the American Registry for Diagnostic Medical Sonography, Cardiovascular Credentialing International and the American Registry of Radiologic Technologists. The primary regulated metrics are mechanical index, a metric associated with the cavitation bioeffect, and thermal index, a metric associated with the tissue heating bioeffect.
The FDA requires that the machine not exceed established limits, which are reasonably conservative so as to maintain diagnostic ultrasound as a safe imaging modality. This requires self-regulation on the part of the manufacturer in terms of the machine's calibration. Ultrasound-based prenatal care and sex screening technologies were launched in India in the 1980s. With concerns about its misuse for sex-selective abortion, the Government of India passed the Prenatal Diagnostic Techniques Act in 1994 to regulate legal and illegal uses of ultrasound equipment. The law was further amended into the Preconception and Prenatal Diagnostic Techniques Act in 2004 to deter and punish prenatal sex screening and sex-selective abortion. It is currently a legal and a punishable crime in India to determine or disclose the sex of a fetus using ultrasound equipment. After the French physicist Pierre Curie's discovery of piezoelectricity in 1880, ultrasonic waves could be deliberately generated for industry. Thereafter, in 1940, the American acoustical physicist Floyd Firestone devised the first ultrasonic echo imaging device, the supersonic reflectoscope, to detect internal flaws in metal castings. In 1941, the Austrian neurologist Karl Theodusik was in collaboration with his brother, Fried Reich, a physicist, likely, the first person to ultrasonically echo image the human body outlining thereby the ventricles of a human brain. Ultrasonic energy was first applied to the human body for medical purposes by Dr. George Ludwig at the Naval Medical Research Institute, Bethesda, Maryland in the late 1940s. English-born physicist John Wilde first used ultrasound to assess the thickness of bowel tissue as early as 1949. He has been described as the father of medical ultrasound. Subsequent advances in the field took place concurrently in several countries. But it was not until 1963 when Meyer Dirk and Wright launched production of the first commercial handheld articulated arm compound contact B mode scanner that ultrasound became generally available for medical use. In his book L Investigation Vascular PAR Ultrasonography Doppler Dr. Claude Franceschi laid down the Doppler ultrasound fundamentals of the hemodynamics semiotics, which are still in use in current Doppler arterial and venous duplex ultrasound investigations. Parallel Developments in Glasgow Scotland by Professor Ian Donald and colleagues at the Glasgow Royal Maternity Hospital led to the first diagnostic applications of the technique. Donald was an obstetrician with a self-confessed childish interest in machines, electronic and otherwise, who, having treated the wife of one of the company's directors, was invited to visit the research department of boilermakers Babcock and Wilcox at Renfrew where he used their industrial ultrasound equipment to conduct experiments on various morbid anatomical specimens and assess their ultrasonic characteristics. Together with the medical physicist Tom Brown and fellow obstetrician Dr. John McVicker, Donald refined the equipment to enable differentiation of pathology in live volunteer patients. These findings were reported in The Lancet on June 7, 1958 as investigation of abdominal masses by pulsed ultrasound possibly one of the most important papers ever published in the field of diagnostic medical imaging. At GRMH, Professor Donald and Dr. James Willocks then refined their techniques to obstetric applications including fetal head measurement to assess the size and growth of the fetus. With the opening of the new Queen Mother's Hospital in York Hill in 1964, it became possible to improve these methods even further. Dr. Stuart Campbell's pioneering work on fetal cephalometry led to it acquiring long-term status as the definitive method of study of fetal growth. 
As the technical quality of the scans was further developed, it soon became possible to study pregnancy from start to finish and diagnose its many complications such as multiple pregnancy, fetal abnormality, and placenta previa. Diagnostic ultrasound has since been imported into practically every other area of medicine. Medical ultrasonography was used in 1953 at Lund University by cardiologist Inga Edler and Gustav Ludwig Hertz's son Karl Helmuth Hertz, who was then a graduate student at the university's Department of Nuclear Physics. Edler had asked Hertz if it was possible to use radar to look into the body, but Hertz said this was impossible. However, he said, it might be possible to use ultrasonography. Hertz was familiar with using ultrasonic reflectoscopes of the American acoustical physicist Floyd Firestone's invention for non-destructive materials testing, and together Edler and Hertz developed the idea of using this method in medicine. The first successful measurement of heart activity was made on October 29. 1953 using a device borrowed from the ship construction company Cockums in Malmo. On December 16 the same year, the method was used to generate an echoencephalogram. Edler and Hertz published their findings in 1954. In 1962, after about two years of work, Joseph Holmes, William Wright, and Ralph Meyer Dirk developed the first compound contact B-mode scanner. Their work had been supported by U.S. Public Health Services and the University of Colorado. Wright and Meyer Dirk left the university to form Physical Ionic Engineering Incorporated which launched the first commercial handheld articulated arm compound contact B-mode scanner in 1963. This was the start of the most popular design in the history of ultrasound scanners. In the late 1960s Dr. Jean Strandness and the bioengineering group at the University of Washington conducted research on Doppler ultrasound as a diagnostic tool for vascular disease. Eventually, they developed technologies to use duplex imaging, or Doppler in conjunction with B-mode scanning, to view vascular structures in real time, while also providing hemodynamic information. The first demonstration of color Doppler was by Jeff Stevenson, who was involved in the early developments and medical use of Doppler-shifted ultrasonic energy. The leading manufacturers of ultrasound equipment are Siemens Healthineers, GE Healthcare, and Philips. <laughs>